It looked a lot like other K-State games this year where the Cats won. There was some good. There was some bad. There was some in between. There was also uh, a lot of times where you thought, this team not very good. And then other moments where we got, why, why is this team on the bubble? We got it all in this game against Texas. All that matters is that K-State flipped the script from the first time they played the Horns where you felt fortunate to be in the game at halftime. K-State didn't fully take advantage of it in the second half in Austin. They did in Kansas City. They came out, they jumped on Texas, and they end up getting a big 78-74 win over the Horns. Welcome to K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. There are a couple of ways we can go in talking about how K-State got this done against Texas. They struggled offensively early. I think it was 39-29 at halftime. But the second half came around. Tyler Perry shooting it well in this game. David Gasson was huge, and Day-Day Ames was kind of the revelation in this game. Yeah, I think the, the place that we started is Day-Day Ames' the second half, where he was probably the second best player on the floor for K-State in the second half, and maybe even the second best player on the floor, period. He was making big plays. He was getting inside the lane. When K-State's offense gets paint touches, that's where a lot of their threes come from. It's where a lot of their makes come from. So to get big to get paint touches and Day-Day Ames was providing it was huge in the second half for K-State. It really helped flip the script of this game. The other real big adjustment that you saw K-State make, and it's, it's a funny one, is K-State was just attacking Brock Cunningham. Every time that he was on the floor, if K-State got a switch that they liked, they went right after him. And Arthur Kaluma and Day-Day Ames were the two biggest beneficiaries of that. Well, in K-State, a couple of things that we've talked about all season about being keys and then winning games. they got to shoot better from three. They did that in tonight's game, although Max Aismas, he tried his hardest at the end to, to kind of make it work out a little bit better, but the Cats were 5 of 13 there. They go to the free throw line seven more times in Texas. That's what you talked about. And in going to the free throw line more, they got Dylan DeSue in foul trouble. They got him there, and then he picked up another one in the second half that was critical because he dove on the floor, undercut Tyler Perry, and that was huge. So fouls played a big role in this game because it wasn't K-State committing the dumb ones. It was Texas, and that cost them. Yeah, and whoever was on the officials at halftime of when Dylan DeSue posts up, he really likes to throw an elbow. That was huge because in the first two possessions, DeSue had two offensive fouls and had to go sit down because he had three fouls with 18.30 to go in the game. So that, that was a big portion of the game. Yeah, this was a Doug Sermon's legacy game. And there's a lot of talk in Manhattan, should Beasley go up first, should Poland go up first in the rafters. If K-State gets into the NCAA tournament, I will present Doug Sermons and black and white stripes to go in the rafters before those guys because it was an all-timer from him tonight. Uh, reminiscent of his performance last year in Manhattan, K-State against TCU, he took the game over in a good way for K-State. And I know we can't always say that about refs, and a lot of you are like, especially Doug Sermons, but he, he took it over, and they were they were the right calls. He, he did what had to be done there, and K-State – was also clean with the basketball in the second half. They only turned the ball over two times in the second. After the game, when asked about it, Tyler Perry said, well, it's because I quit turning the ball over, and that's why it was better. Uh, all around, K-State played as close to as flawless of a second half as they could, and it resulted in a major win that pushes them closer to the right side of the bubble and now sets up a rematch with Iowa State, a team that is scary, great defensively, but K-State has played well two times this season. Yeah, you could argue that that was probably the best half that K-State's played all season. I mean, it was the most complete because in, with about 10 minutes to go in the second half, I, I posted uh, on Twitter, like, K-State needs to find some kind of consistency because they kept getting it close, and when things were going well, you could see K-State kind of relax a little bit, and that's what got Texas up to like an 8, 9, 10-point lead. And the last 10 minutes, K-State didn't really relinquish their, their focus and their pressure, and they kept going, and that's what kind of get, got the lead ballooned. And really, if it wasn't for Max Aismas hitting some – amazing shots down the stretch. K-State probably wins this game by double digits. Yeah, Max A. Smith, you wonder why was why is he not more involved in what Texas does offensively, take the game over, whatever. But it is Iowa State up next. K-State back in T-Mobile Center tomorrow night. Six o'clock start time against the Clones. And then if they win that game, I mean, you would feel really good about what the chances are. Uh, so another day, four games on the docket for tomorrow. Everybody will have played a game by the end of tomorrow. And uh, K-State gets an Iowa State team that they just beat a couple days ago so big time for the cats to get that win we'll see what comes about with tomorrow's game where's the optimism level at with iowa state round because I, I mean this of the top four seeds texas tech you would probably throw in there but iowa state they they played really well this year and they're going to have you know 
at least equal fans to what they had, you know, with Iowa State. Iowa State's not going to dominate it like they do in Ames. I, I would even say of the top four seeds that K State could have faced, that's probably the one, the one that you wanted the most because K State played really well against them the first time. Then the second time they got the job done. You're going to have a good crowd for both sides. It's going to be electric in here. I'm really excited for it. it it's going to come down to can K State make open shots because that's what Iowa State allows. They allow open threes and they dare you to beat them from the three point line. If they can get that done tomorrow night, K-State probably wins, and that, that's a game that would probably get them in the NCAA tournament. I would, I guess I should say Baylor's probably who you'd rather see, because Scott Drew, I think, has zero intentions of ever letting Jerome Tang lose a game to him. He's just like, ah, I like the guy. Here's one for you. But yes, and uh, Cam Carter deserves a shout-out, because his last two games have been really good for K-State. There's still some moments in there where you go, what is going on? Earlier in the game, I compared him to Reese Bobby from Talladega Nights. Uh, for those of you don't, that don't know names, it would be Ricky Bobby's dad. You know, Things are starting to go well. They, they head out to the Applebee's. It's awesome. They're a family again. And he gets kicked out because things are going too well. That's kind of Cam Carter's play style at times where it's like, oh, he's knocking down shots. He's, he's playing good defense, all this. And it's like, oh, that turnover is ugly. What are we doing with that shot? He's trying to get kicked out of the Applebee's occasionally. And tonight he had the mental fortitude to decide, you know what? I stood up, I started to yell, but I want to finish my Fiesta Lime Chicken. And that's what Cam Carter did. It helped K-State win 78-74 to over the Texas Longhorns. So that is, that's it for us. We'll be back tomorrow in T-Mobile Center. We will also we'll be live on the YouTube tomorrow at some point. Who knows when? Wild night. We'll go finish watching KU in Cincinnati and uh, get set for everything that's to come tomorrow. So uh, any final thoughts, Drew, before we get out of here? Uh, I'm, I'll say my final thoughts for today is probably that the, the better team won. K-State was the better team for most of the game and they came out on top and I it, it's a simple game when you make shots that's it's a great point it, it's it is amazing how fun and easy the game of basketball looks when shots go in the hole shots went in the hole for K-State in a lot of different ways they get the job done and I mean the turnover thing that's that's going to stick with me because they're improving there where we saw them force them at an equal amount with Iowa State, and then tonight they were clean. They're going to give themselves a real chance tomorrow against the Clones. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. This has been K-State Online. We'll talk to you more tomorrow from T-Mobile Center where the Cats take on the Clones for the third time this season looking for a trip to the Big 12 semifinals.